Hi students, good morning. This is the third video about biological kingdoms, and now we're going to talk about protists. Now, uh, remember that protists have some particular characteristics that obviously make them uh, part of another category. They are not plants, they are not animals, they are not bacteria, which they can be confused with because they are single cell and probably microscopic, some of them. But today I hope this video is helpful to um, observe other characteristics that can help you to define a protist better. Remember, they are not plants, they are not bacteria, they are not animals. So, let's start with the characteristics of a protist. First of all, remember they are eukaryotic organisms. Which means they have a nucleus. I found this picture, this image of an eukaryotic cell. It's really pretty because it's an actual real microscopic photography or picture. Probably took by an electron microscope. And it is good because we can see actual, the real nucleus. This is a real picture. It is not a... A drawing or a diagram like the ones we have seen. If you can see right here we have the nucleus. This is an actual picture. And well, well let's continue talking about the characteristics. This protein, protein kingdom can be uni or multicellular which means they can be formed by one single cell or probably by thousands or millions of cells like these organs. They can be auto or also heterotrophs. They can produce their own food by photosynthesis, like this one, or they can feed on another, for example, small bacteria or other types of protists, like this one. In the world of the protists, we can have different shapes, different forms, and they could be so different that there's a practical joke between biologists or between the uh, persons that study living things in which we said that uh, if you don't know where to place an organism, where to classify it, because it has some many characteristics of other kingdoms, for, ex for example, it can perform photosynthesis or it can uh, have uh, motile parts or it can be movable or probably it looks like a sort of microscopic animal, you should put it inside the protist category. So, uh, in this kingdom we're going to find a lot of different organisms. Probably other scientists couldn't group them in any other uh, taxonomical category, so that's why they uh, place them over protist kingdom. Now, we can classify protists in three different types three main, uh, general types. Ones will be the plant-like protists, also known as phytoplankton. Well, phytoplankton is an example of a plant-like protist. And we have also protozoa, which is an animal-like protist. They look like animal. And fungi-like, they look very, very similar like fungi. Do you remember the joke that I said about biologists saying that if you don't know where to put it, you put an organism inside protist kingdom? Well, this is actually the explanation. They can be animal-like, they could be, sorry, plant-like, they could be animal-like and fungus-like also. And they look very similar to a bacteria, but remember that they have a nucleus and bacteria don't. So let's see some examples. These are some examples of plant-like protists. They look like a microscopic algae. For example, the one that we have in here, they live in the water. They obtain the nutrients from their water. Well, in this case, besides obtaining nutrients from the water, they obtain oxygen from it, and they use it to perform photosynthesis. That's why we see them as a green cells. Remember, they perform photosynthesis. While, in the other hand, we have this type of Protists that they call them animal like because they are motile, they can move or they have motile parts. Now, these two examples are very interesting because this one has a very long flagellum that can use can be used to move. We can see another 
flagellum over here remember that's the way the cell propels this is a single cell we have the nucleus over there the organelles and probably some of these organelles are going to be chloroplasts if they perform a photosynthesis just like the one we have in here these other examples like they look amazing they have a lot of different cilia or uh, small hair-like structures that are projections projections from the cell membrane that they used to generate a, a current of water and the particles, the food particles can get inside the cell. Now remember this is just one single cell that has these adaptations, cilia at the top for obtaining their nutrients. So these are the examples of photosynthetic protists probably this one could be photosynthetic too and this is an example of an heterotroph protist because it feeds on another organisms heterotroph well I missed a print this word heterotroph now this is right heterotroph okay let's continue but besides Microscopic protists, we can find some macroscopic protists, protists that we can see with our naked eye. Generally, these are named as algae. Why an algae is not a plant? Because they didn't have internal structures for absorbing the nutrients directly from the ground. They didn't have like small special tubes inside each of these for moving the nutrients from the bottom to the top they absorb directly the nutrients from the surroundings that's why they can't be considered as plants besides that they are they can be submerged inside water and an actual plant won't allow this uh, an actual plant will get rotten because of the excess of water and an algae can perform that so that's why we put or classify algae inside protist kingdom and no plant kingdom. Now there's a special property that some protists can have. This is very very important, very interesting and it is also known as bioluminescence. Like the word says it, it's uh, generating light by living things like a firefly for example, but in this case this property is performed by a protist. This picture it's a real picture of an coast, a coast, sorry, uh, in which we can see bioluminescence at the shore of this lake. Generally, bioluminescence it's performed by living organisms, in this case, a protist. These are real pictures or real images of protist, the one that produces bioluminescence in the lake. And we uh, we don't have to travel very far to find bioluminescence. Just in the shores of uh, Jalisco, some coastal zones of Jalisco, we can find this type of effect during night. And it is performed by a protist, a unicellular organism that um, during night performs a chemical reaction to generate light and this is only performed by a protist. Finally we can have another type of protist they are very um, interesting and very uh, useful to study for because they can generate very strong diseases like malaria. Malaria is a disease that affects red blood cells. This is an actual picture, an actual um, microscopy picture took from red blood cells that have this type of uh, parasite. This is not a bacteria, it's a protist, a protist that lives and feeds on the nutrients inside a red blood cell. Once the protist is um, already grown up and ready to reproduce, it explodes and breaks apart the red blood cells, as you can see it in here. This disease, remember, known as malaria, it's very dangerous. It is transmitted by a mosquito bite. Inside the mosquito, the saliva has this type of protist. And once they are inside an organism, the red blood cell can burst and expel the actual protist that is ready to reproduce again. 
finally, we should remember that Agi, like the one we have in this picture, is part also of Prodi's kingdom. Remember, they are not plants because they didn't have inner tubes in here to move the nutrients just to the top. They don't have roots either. Well, probably they will have some way to anchor themselves to the ground, but the roots are not going to be useful for transporting nutrients right to the top. They will just absorb the nutrients directly, sorry, not the nutrients, oxygen, because remember they produce their own food. They're going to absorb the oxygen directly from the water and photosynthesis will perform all the nutrients or create all the nutrients the plant needs and the way to move it will be well by diffusion probably so this is the general review that we have for protists remember keep seeing these videos probably they will be helpful for you and if you have any further question remember use internet use books now we have a lot of different resources to research and to learn about living things. Well, I hope you like it, and keep tuned for next video that will be Fungi, Fungi Kingdom. Goodbye.